right, hello everyone. Um, I'm back and I'm going to do the second question from the level two NCEA calculus 2020 exam. So I did level one, or I did the question one yesterday and today I'll do question two. Okay, so we uh, open up the first one, question two, and it's the classic uh, graphing the derivative of a curve. So this is a kind of a classic achieved question. Uh, first thing we want to do is when we are given the function, and we want to sketch the gradient function, is we look at where the gradient is zero, and then we mark that onto the derived graph down here. Okay, so I've got my zeros on there. That's where the, the turning points are. And I look at the graph here. It looks like my gradient is positive here. Uh, it's zero there, and the gradient is negative all the way down here. And then it's positive going to be up there. Okay, so positive gradient, zero, negative gradient, zero, positive gradient, like that. So I've marked the blue as positive, uh, pink is negative gradient, and then I just uh, do that on here. So this is a positive gradient approaching zero, positive gradient approaching zero. This is all going to be negative, so it's going to be um, below the x-axis here. I don't, I don't know the steepness of this, I just know it's going to be coming, oh, that's terrible, sorry. And then it's turning back up to zero and then it's positive. Okay, so if I were to color code that, it would look like that. Okay, another way to do it is if it's a, if it's a positive cubic up, down, up, it's going to be a happy face parabola, one way of remembering it. Okay, next one. Okay, next one, find the x-coordinate of the maximum point on the curve given by this uh, equation here. Explain how you know that this point is the maximum, not the minimum. Okay, uh, first of all, let's look at this find the x-coordinate of the maximum point on the curve. Classic calculus question where we're going to set the gradient equation equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so let's do that. Looks like we're going to derive this equation right here. And uh, we can do that by now. When I derive that, I get uh, 6x squared minus uh, 2 times 42 is 84x plus 240. Okay, so that's what I get when I derive that equation. And now since it's a turning, uh, since a maximum point is a turning point, I'm going to set this equation equal to zero. 6x squared, and, and solve for x. 6x squared minus 84x plus 240 equals zero. That would probably get you achieved right there, I'm guessing. Um, it looks like everything's a factor of six here. Just, I, I think it is. I think six goes into all these numbers. So just to keep it simple, I'm, I'm just going to divide both sides by 6, or just multiply by a 6, it doesn't matter. And when I do that, I get a nice simplified quadratic here, which we're solving for x. So if you want to do graphics, if you want a quadratic formula, but this one factorizes quite nicely um, into, I think, x minus 10 times x minus 4. Let me see, that multiplies to get positive 40 and adds to get negative 14. Check. All right, so it looks like I've got two values of x here, x, two, uh, x equals 10 and x equals positive 4. Okay, all right, that's, that's some headway. So they're both, they're both turning points, but which one's the max, which one's the min? So here's where I do the second derivative test. Okay, in order to figure out which one is the max or min, I'm going to do the second derivative test and substitute both of these values in for x to see what's going to happen. Okay, so my second derivative, I just do the derivative of this one, of the first derivative, and I get 12x, 2 times 6 is 12, uh, minus 84. Uh, no, not 84x, just 84. Now I'm going to substitute both these values in. So let's see what happens when I substitute um, 10 is. And if we remember, the second derivative tells about, about the concavity of the curve. If the second derivative is positive, it means it's going to be a minimum. And if the second derivative is negative, it means it's going to be a maximum. So let's see what happens when I plug 12 in. Sorry, 10. 12 times 10 minus 84. Looks like that's going to be a positive number there. Um, I think that's 36. Okay, well, 36 is positive. I'm going to say 36 is greater than 0. Uh, therefore, that's going to be a, um, that, that will be a minimum. Okay, so if it's positive, that's going to be a minimum. So therefore, this one must be, but let's check it just in case. 
Uh, the second derivative is 12 times 4 minus 84. And I think that will give me a negative. That gives me negative 36, I think. Yep, negative 36. So negative 36 is less than 0. Uh, therefore, that is the max. Now, it didn't tell me to get the whole coordinate, did it? It's find the x-coordinate of the maximum point. Okay. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so I'd probably say that's a merit problem there. Okay, moving on. And we get a kinematics problem, which is probably at a chi level. So the speed is given by the velocity formula here in meters per second, so t is measured in seconds. What is the object's acceleration when t equals 2? So what they're asking is uh, this question right here. And of course, we know that to go from velocity to acceleration, we derive. So we're going to say, okay, let's derive this formula here, and that's not, that's a pretty basic one. 2 times 3 is 6, 6t minus 5. So we plug and chug 2 in there, 2 seconds, uh, 6 times 2 minus 5, and at, after, or at 2 seconds, 12 minus 5, 7 meters per second squared. Don't forget the units on that. Whenever we're doing kinematics, always include the units on there. Okay? Okay, moving on to the next one, which is a merit one. Okay, check this one out. This is a, a yeah, standard merit problem where they give you the derived function here. So they're giving you uh, f dash x, and then they want you to write the original function. And this is a lot harder than it looks because you've got to work backwards from that other achieved problem that we did. So what I, what I do is I look at this. First of all, if I know, if I know the derived formula here, the derived equation here is, is a sad face parabola, as I call it, I know, that, I know that the original, so this is, this is a, a sad face parabola with a maximum, I know that the original function has got to be a cubic, because I'm going backwards here, it's got to be a cubic, and it's got to be a down, up, down cubic. Okay, so this kind of, all right, this, this kind of helps us when we go to sketch uh, this part here. So let me straighten out the camera here. Okay, so once again, I'm going to line up the turning points just like I did in the last one. All right, so where, where this is where the turning points are. These are the zeros on, on the original. So I go, okay, uh, li line those up there. I don't know where they're going to fall yet. So they're going to fall on these, on these yellow lines here. The difference with this one is it gives us this bit of information here, that f of c is 0. So these guys, the, the, the turning point will be on that point. Okay. So if the turning point's on that point, and it's got to be a down, up, down, that means it's got to be something like, now I, I struggled at sketching this one actually, because it's got to be a turning point here, and it's going to bounce off that one, turning point, means it's going to bounce off that point, and then there's going to be another turning point somewhere on this line. And that guy has to be a max. So I did something like, um, and it wasn't too good, something like that. Okay, that was the best one I did, even though that looks a bit wonky. Okay, and so remember like I did, I, I checked that last time. All right, this all has a negative gradient here. This is negative, that's a negative gradient there, and that's negative. There are my zeros. Um, this here all is a positive gradient, so that's the positive part there. And then this here is a negative gradient as well, which is reflected in the gradient function up there. Okay, so it's just the reverse of the achieve problem we did at the beginning of this problem. And there we go. So moving on to the next one. Okay, let's get down to business with this one. So a cubic function has this formula here with a bunch of letters. <laughs> And it has turning points that occur at x equals 3 and x equals negative 5. Find an expression for c in terms of a. So probably the hardest one in the exam, I would say. Um, let's start with this right here and translate this. Okay, so the, the turning points at, at x equals 3 and negative 5 means that, okay, the, the derived equation at x equals 3 is going to be equal to 0 at negative 3, and it's going to be equal to 0 at negative 5. And this is going to help us hugely. So turning points means I'm going to have to derive this equation and just hold up because we're not going to get too far. That when we derive this, the a, b's, and c's don't go away; they just hang out. 
So I get 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. Okay? So what I did next is I, is I go, okay, well, wait, they told me here that at x equals 3, it's going to equal, the derived equation is going to equal 0. And at x equals negative 5, it's going to equal 0. So I just substituted this in for x. I went, okay, so I'll do, um, I'll do 3 first. And I said, okay, when I substitute 3 in for x, 3a3 uh, squared plus 2b times 3 plus c, it's going to equal 0. Okay, because it told me it was a turning point. And I simplify this, and I don't, I don't really get an answer, but I, I get an expression. So 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3, this is 27a plus 6b plus c equals 0. Okay, can't do anything there, I'm done. And so I did the same with negative 5. I said, okay, I'm going to throw in negative 5 in here and see what I get. I get 3a times negative 5 squared plus... 2b times negative 5 plus c, and that's going to equal 0 as well. Because it told me. Well, it didn't tell me it would equal 0, but it's a turning point, and we should know that. Anyway, uh, 25 times 3 is 75. I get 75a. My, uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10b plus c equals 0. Okay, now here, to be honest, I didn't really know what to do, but I know both these expressions equal 0. And so I okay, well first of all these are these are good expressions. I'm just going to pause right here because I'm going to come back to these later. So anyway, so they both equal the same value 0. So if they both equal the same value, I can set these expressions equal to each other and just play around with it. See what happens. So they both equal 0. That means these guys are equal to each other. It's 27a plus 6b plus c is the same as 75a minus 10b plus c. Okay, so I went, alrighty. Um, I can cancel the c's out. I could subtract c from both sides. Okay, and then what else can I do? I can subtract 6b from both sides. Minus 6b, minus 6b. Those cancel out. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just seeing what's going to happen. So I get 27a equals 75a. This gives me minus 16b. Now I notice, okay, well, I've got a's on both sides. Um, what happens if I subtract uh, 75a from both sides? Minus 75a, minus 75a, and I get, I, I get a minus 48 on this side, minus 48a, these cancel out, equals, whoops, negative 16b, sorry about that. Now I don't, well, I might as well get a by itself. Because I find an expression for c in terms of a, and I know I cross canceled the c out, but I'll, don't worry. So what did I do? I divided both sides by negative 16. And yes, I guess you could have done this another way, but this is what I did, and I'm pretty confident with it. <laughs> so these cancel out, and I get b equals uh, negative 16 goes into negative 48 three times, so I get 3a equals b. That's great. All right. So I went, okay, well, what if I take this expression for b, which is 3a, and I throw it back into that expression right there? What would happen if I did that? Uh, okay, so I go, well, if b is 3a, so that means uh, 75a minus 10 times 3a, because that's the value of b. I'm substituting it in there. You could have put it in that one. I don't know why I put it in this one. I just did. Um, plus c equals 0. Clean this up a bit. And I get 75a minus 30a plus c equals 0. Oops, going off the screen. Sorry. Um, what do I do? Collect like terms here. And I get 45a plus c equals 0. Well, here I'm pretty darn close. Okay. Uh, what does the question say? Find an expression for c in terms of a. Well, what does c equal? If I subtract 45a from both sides, minus 45a from both sides, I get my answer. Um, and I was pretty happy to get that. I get c equals negative 45a. That's got to be it. Okay, so that, that is a good problem. Okay, so I, I would probably say somewhere around here is going to be achieved. 
Maybe getting some value of this is going to be merit, but that that final step's got to be the excellence one. And um, yeah, pretty pretty pleased with that problem. And um, in terms in, in general, this this whole test is looking all right. Okay, thanks for watching.